Back to the House Intelligence Committee memo now out. The fear now is that that unverified anti-Trump Steele file was filled with conspiracy theories that Mr. Steele was spinning. The memo claims Steele's motivations and payments by Democrats were kept hidden, covered up to the FISA court in order to get a warrant to spy on Trump's advisor and possibly the entire campaign. Again, these are claims from the memo. Here's the House Intelligence memo revealing the motive of the author of the Trump file, Christopher Steele, saying, quote, Steele admitted to DOJ senior official Bruce Orr his feelings against then-candidate Trump in September 2016, when Steele was told Orr that he, Steele, was desperate that Donald Trump not get elected and was passionate about him not being president. Joining me now, former Oversight Committee Chair and Fox News contributor Jason Chaffetz. Congresswoman, we're so glad you're on the show tonight. You've read the memo. Is it worse than you thought? Um, it's very, very bad. I mean, it, there is nothing, uh, you know, to be happy about. It's a sad day for the FBI. We're talking about the senior most people the FBI entrusted as the premier law enforcement uh, agency to not do their background, to, to rely on news accounts, to support a dossier, to end up that it was the same person feeding the news reports. Uh, we're better than that. And I think what Director Comey, his tweet today is equally as concerning to be so dismissive, saying that's it. He knows that's not all the things that are there. This is four pages out of a long series of information. Um, and it's it really is sad that the FBI uh, stooped to those levels to pursue a political agenda. Now, sir, we're tracking the other media coverage of this. They are saying that Democrats are going to come out with the answer to this memo. They're going to have their own memo, uh, that this is really about the Russia probe, the importance of keeping the Russia probe going, no meddling. And maybe even the midterms are worried about Russia in the midterms. i got to tell you something. What's not being talked about in other media, we're covering it here, Congressman. You've talked about it. The average American is really scared. They don't want to have an unaccountable court that uh, approves rubber stamping of spying of average Americans working on a campaign. This is not the America they have grown up in. They're not liking this at all. What's your response? Yeah. No, this is a principle that's true on either side of the aisle. It's very disingenuous for any Democrat to suggest, oh, this is a nothing burger. Are you kidding me? If Donald Trump had done this, if it happened, uh, you know, against Barack Obama, if it happened against Hillary Clinton, there would be so much outrage, and rightfully so. This is not acceptable. It's not who we are as Americans, and we should not stand for it. I, I, I think it's very disingenuous to say there is really nothing here because. The court was snookered, and I think one of the questions has to be to the judge who was taken to the cleaners on this one, what's he going to do about it? Because I think he yeah. should haul those people back up before his court. Yeah, your point is well taken. The Democrats and the media were up in arms when Ed Snowden revealed NSA snooping via and it went to WikiLeaks. They wanted transparency then. It doesn't seem to be an issue for them now. There's a striking contradiction there. See, and you're right. Your point's well taken. What if Reagan did this to Mondale? What if George W. did it to Obama? I mean, to your point, former Obama officials Susan Rice and Ben Rhodes and Samantha Power, they were warning everybody about the abuses of President Trump without revealing that they were the, themselves getting FISA information from surveillance efforts like the one against Carter Page. That's why this inspector general report, which will come on the heels of this, will be much more comprehensive. Michael Horowitz at the Department of Justice inspector general has 450 agents. They're going to come up with a very thorough report. This is a person who was appointed by uh, Barack Obama, confirmed by the United States Senate, and it'll be much broader than just this problem that we see okay. here today. We want to quickly get your reaction to Nancy Pelosi and going, uh, going after Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer going after James Comey. Take a listen to the soundbite. They really didn't like him back then. Listen. When uh, the director of the FBI, Mr. Comey, uh, released that letter two Fridays ago, he became the leading Republican political operative in the country. Well, I was appalled by what Director Comey did. Wittingly or unwittingly, what he did was wrong. He owes not only Secretary Clinton, but the American people an explanation for what appears to be an appalling action. So this is like a Molotov cocktail just thrown into a very explosive arena. Okay, that was Comey reopening the Clinton uh, email uh, probe after the classified emails were found on Anthony Weiner's laptop. But now the Democrats are saying James Comey is a great guy. Your thoughts? 
they have been all over the map. In many ways, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer were right. I think the way James Comey handled this whole thing, uh, top to bottom, is suspect at best. Uh, he should have never been involved in that. It goes back to this tarmac meeting between uh, President Clinton and and uh, Loretta Lynch, that has huge question marks. An FBI director should have never been making those statements. And then we have recently learned that Mr. McCabe, who's essentially the number two person at the FBI, actually knew about the emails on Anthony Weiner's laptop three to four weeks mm -hmm. before that. So they held it for a long time. So again, it doesn't look good on any side of this. That's why I think it should be something that is not tolerated by both Republicans and Democrats yeah. because the country is the one that got let down. They're yeah. not supposed to be partisan, right. and in this case, okay. they used political means. Congressman Chafe, it's good to see you, sir. Thanks for coming on. The Arizona Congressman Paul Gosar is now calling for criminal prosecution, prosecution of all the top FBI and Justice Department officials who were named in the four-page document. He's saying they must be held accountable for their, quote, illegal misconduct and use uh, FISA, the congressman joins us now. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for joining us. And um, Thanks, Connell. You know, it's interesting. You seem to be, even in your own um, party of here, a little bit of an outlier. I know people are upset by this, and they're calling for changes to be made, say, but not necessarily for people to be prosecuted or thrown in jail. So tell me what specifically you're talking about criminally. So you, you have find it's factual that the dossier was used as a cornerstone for this FISA. And this is what Mr. Comey said was right. salacious and unverified. And yet, every time that the FISA was open and renewed, you had to present those findings of probable cause, mm -hmm. which is a premeditation to defiance of, of the whole basis of our law. And so this is premeditated, Connell, and people that utilize this at the highest realms of our Justice uh, Department, where we hold that near and dear, have to be held accountable. You and I couldn't get away with this, and so they have to be held accountable. One thing, sir, I would say is, aspects. isn't there, and to go back to a phrase that was used a lot last night in discussing this, there is something to we don't know what we don't know. In other words, we don't know the other items that might have been used to get the warrant, or we only know what's in this four-page document. So isn't isn't there, you know, a little bit of a cart before the horse here that we're getting ahead of there's, ourselves? There's, there's not, because when you start to use the, 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 the whole inter interaction with the dossier, mm -hmm. um, from its political holdings that it was in origins, not being disclosed in those regards, uh, this is a premise of, of fundamental of problems uh, in which justice is not being served properly. And this is why we've had some problems with the 702, is making sure that that warrant process is is, is verified and properly applied. Right. So there's no, ver there's no question that the dossier played a cornerstone application uh, to getting this FISA warrant uh, in regards to Carter Page. Let me no, go. No question. Uh, in, in terms of what might happen next here, again, I, know, I understand what you're calling for, but uh, Julie was talking earlier about you know, some changes that might happen and what have you. Um, does the invest and the president's even tweeted about the investigation. Uh, let me go to Co Congressman Trey Gowdy because I thought it was interesting what he said on Twitter. He's involved directly in this investigation. In fact, he's the guy, according to Congressman Nunes, who saw the underlying uh, classified information. Here's his tweet from Congressman uh, Gowdy. He said, as I've said repeatedly, I also remain 100 percent confident in special counsel Robert Mueller. The contents of this memo do not in any way discredit his investigation. That, that, was it. that speaks to the investigation that's ongoing. And even though Congressman Gowdy said it's important that we understand and know this information, he doesn't even think the Mueller investigation is necessarily discredited. Your reaction to that? Yeah, I, I would somewhat agree because I want this to go forward because you're going to find collusion. Okay, so you think the two uh, are separate. Your point in regards to the Democratic Party. So your you're point going to is see that with Clinton over oh, okay. and over again. That's what transpired. So your point is that the two are separate. You can continue with the investigation. Oh, absolutely. Okay, absolutely, you can because uh, all paths are going to lead to Miss Clinton because this was this was a total cover up in regards to what transpired. But you can't get away for the way that we attacked a candidate, a political candidate. Um, a political president-elect um, and a president. You can't do that. This is the real straw that's breaking the, the camel's back. This is the problem, Connell, that we mm -hmm. have to address. And everybody that knew those and made those presentations to the FISA uh, court right. um, have to pay a penalty in regards to that. The Democratic argument is that, hey, I get to go back to my earlier point about there being more information out there, that in their memo, which of course is yet to be released, you know, maybe there's something there that we should also consider. Isn't that fair? You know, I've talked to my colleagues, Connell, that have seen that, and they said 
there's nothing in that aspect uh, that, that, that bothers them. Once again, every time the Democrats move their lips, they're lying. Every time they've, they've come forward, you know, the sky is falling. This is a constitutional crisis. Over and over again, it becomes covering their rear end. You know, this was a premeditated attack on a, a political opponent, and we can't have that happening. That is third world type of application. But you're okay Can, with people that? People have to pay for that. With their memo, you, even, you know, maybe your point's true. Maybe there is nothing in it. I mean, some would argue the other side, they argued it all day yesterday. There was nothing in this memo that changed the game. But you, you're okay with that coming out, with that being oh, released? Oh, absolutely. Right. I think what it has to do Get is, everything like uh, Devin Nunez said, bring it before the co committee, do some, uh, some changes in regards to some of the, the, the uh, information that they've seen, right. and then put it out. I don't care. Let the facts fall where they may, because the facts aren't, are, aren't following what the Democrats have been talking about one way or the other. Uh, once again, it's been a big cover your rear end uh, and trying to delay findings. And this is like, I agree with Devin Nunez, this is the mm -hmm. tip of the iceberg. We were seeing the weaponization of the DOJ and well as every other uh, agency from Fast well, and Furious to Operation Choke Point to the IRS. These are all related in a government attacking its citizens and its adversaries. Yeah, I know to your point, Devin, uh, Congressman Nunez has said there may be something coming out still on, say, the State Department, which we'll continue to talk about. But, uh, Congressman, thank you, sir. We appreciate your perspective today. Thanks for coming on. Thanks so much, okay. Donald.